Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com and doing a quick walk around of this Cadillac Escalade. Uh, it was all new for 2015, new body, uh, new Corvette sourced 6.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower. Uh, the 16 will be mostly a carryover, but there are some changes that are worth pointing out. Um, a late production change uh, for the 2015s actually is the replacement of the 6-speed automatic with a new 8-speed. Uh, that's standard with uh, both the rear-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive versions. Uh, that's one change. Um, another interesting change is, uh, well, some upgrades to the suite of electronics. Uh, the Cadillac will now send you via text uh, or email service advisory warnings, which is kind of neat. Also, uh, the processor for the CUE Cadillac User Experience Interface, which I'll show you on the inside of the car in a minute, uh, has been upgraded to faster processing speed so the map loads quicker. This thing is still uh, the reigning champ of the Bling SUV segment. Uh, there really isn't anything quite comparable to it. Uh, the Lincoln Navigator is about the same size, similar generally, um, but it's a distant second place. Um, Ford dropped the V8 from that model this year, uh, and now it only comes with a V6. It is a twin turbo V6, but uh, only 380 horsepower. Uh, versus the Cadillac's 420. Uh, it is less expensive, but it's just got less stature on the street. It's a nice value alternative to the Escalade, but uh, really there's nothing that can really touch this thing. Uh, the Infiniti QX80 is another option. Um, but again, uh, this Escalade is really in a class by itself. Uh, this particular one is a platinum model, so it's got everything and it's nearly $100,000. Uh, something also that it has are these monstrous 22-inch wheels. They're actually standard on uh, the Limited and Up trims. Um, the low trim base model, low trim if you can describe a vehicle, that's nearly $70,000 in base trim uh, as base, comes with 20s. Uh, they look good. Uh, apparently, uh, people like the really big rims, but... Uh, there are two downsides. Um, one, of course, is that the ride quality is fairly stiff. This is a, a, ostensibly a luxury vehicle, but there's only so much suspension tuning that you can do when you've got sidewalls that short. Um, uh, you're going to hit a pothole, you're going to feel the pothole. The other thing is that though this is an SUV uh, and it's available with a four-wheel drive system, uh, those 22-inch wheels and the tires that are on it are really just not the ticket for four-weather driving. So if you're thinking about getting one of these things with the idea that you're going to drive it in the snow, uh, you might want to think again. Uh, or at least get the 20-inch wheels and maybe get some tires for it that are um, a little bit more all-season-y than these. Uh, let's take a look at the inside of this Platinum, and I'll show you some of the features. Note also, it's got these fold-out running boards. The Navigator has that too. Now, I'm six feet three, so I don't particularly like these things because for me, it's an impediment. I can just kind of go in. But for people, especially uh, smaller statured women or older people, they're handy. And I'm pretty sure that you can program these things to, um, to not deploy if you don't want them. All right, let's have a look at the inside. And you'll see, by the way, people criticize this Escalade uh, as being just a tarted up and very expensive Tahoe. But yeah, they really did tart it up a lot, so you can't really fault it. You got this nice suede velour inserts here nice leather everywhere really nicely done it doesn't look like they just slapped it together everything in here is flat screen check that out that's the cue cadillac user interface everything's flat screen it has this um, microwave oven style dash pad that's called they call it haptic it's a, a finger swipe and tap and as you as you move it you can actually get some, you'll get, you'll get physical tactile feedback through your finger. You'll feel it like a little pushback or a sensation that you've done something. Of course, it's got fully automatic keyless ignition. Start that up. You've got a configurable instrument cluster. You can alter the look of that um, to suit. Uh, this uh, CUE screen here also is the main interface for dialing up everything from the, uh, let's get the uh, home back on. Uh, Everything from the audio system, phone, navigation, video. This one has the rear seat DVD entertainment system in the back, which I can't really get the angle on right now, but it's back there. Also, some cool features. If you look here, that little button right there is the uh, cooler for your beverage holder. So if you put your bottle of um, whatever beverage it is here and push that button, it'll keep it cool. You've got two USB ports, not just one. That's kind of nice. Then in the center console here, you've got refrigerated cubby as well so you can put more beverages also you've got more USB ports so that's 
two USB ports, uh, four total USB ports, and here's a little pad for your cell phone also, uh, which is pretty nice. It's got this little plastic grip thing on it. Um, put, put this stuff down, and I'll take you in the back and see if we can see some of the other stuff back there. Ah! Uh, something else that's noteworthy to point out about the Escalade is that you can get it in a uh, longer stretch version. They call it the ESV. Lincoln offers that too, of course. The Infinity QX only comes in one size. All right, so here I am in the second row, uh, which is nicer than the first row in many vehicles. Like I've got my individualized DVD Blu-ray player here with separate audio controls. Uh, there's my wireless headphones. I've got my separate climate control here with seats, with heaters. Uh, again, all kind of a microwave oven style touch screen. Um, got this nice open area here, which would be ideal to put uh, a cooler. Uh, and even the third row is not half bad. The third row in this thing is better than the second row uh, in some crossover SUVs. Um, decent room back there. The, uh, the chief deficit, uh, and this is just a common thing uh, with vehicles of this design type, meaning rear-wheel drive based SUVs, you'll notice that the floor kind of humps up as you get there, and that's because right about here, that's where the rear axle is, the, the longitudinal rear axle and so the floor has to go up to accommodate the axle and that means when you're sitting in those back seats your um, your legs are kind of be a little bit higher up but still it's a, uh, a perfectly viable place for uh, kids to sit and even adults for the short term uh, so you've got tons of room in this thing which you'd expect to find in something this big anyway um, the rest of the review will be up at epautos.com shortly uh, thanks for viewing and we'll catch up with you next